So I want to walk you through how you can put these watercolor textures to use. And we're going to be working inside Adobe Illustrator. This is the latest version. That said, if you're using, let's say, CS5 or CS6, which is before Creative Cloud, um, all the methodologies I'm going to show you in uh, this movie are going to apply to older versions of Illustrator. So if you happen not to have Creative Cloud or the latest version, don't worry about it. You'll still be able to do um, everything that I'm going to show you using the watercolor uh, textures in this set. Now, for this design, I'm laying out a simple black and white motif that I'm going to then utilize the textures and kind of give it a nice authenticity. And I just wanted to speak towards how I created the base art that you're going to see here in just a second. So, for example, this star shape is simply nothing more than using the, the star tool uh, shown here in the, this palette. And this is just simply a font that was um, um, assigned to a curve, and then I uh, converted it to shapes, to paths, and you can see that here. And this is a typeface, uh, a specific typeface, but I was just using it to guide um, my manual drawing, meaning all three of these elements shown here, the bottom one is a motif I saw in something, on a, a really low res image and I just crudely built it out just to capture that shape, the essence of that shape. Now, if you look to the right here, all of these shapes, what I did is I printed out what you see on left with, along with everything else that you're gonna see in my motif. And then I just took a, um, a paper mate uh, black flare pen and just drew on top of it um, on another sheet, on top of a light table that is, and created this star. So it's the same element, it's just more organically drawn. So if I, you know, zoom in on this star, it's perfect. And then if I go to this one, you can see how it's more organic, more hand done in quality. And then I use the type that I initially typed out with the existing font I had. And I just use that to hand letter on top of it to make it more distinctly Western, I guess, but more importantly, to capture the essence of kind of that organic, uh, crudely drawn uh, form, not a perfect vector shape by any means. And on the motif down below, I just used what I kind of captured uh, from a low res image and then use that to model an exact ornament type shape that's going to be used in my uh, larger motif. And so what I ended up creating is this design shown here. And once again, if I go to keyline view, this is all vector shapes. So none of this is placed images or anything. These are all vector shapes, just simply black fill, no stroke. And I've separated them so I can isolate these shapes. So I can isolate just the type, just this, uh, this skull image. I can isolate the name of the town, the ranch word, the star, and all the subtext. So that's important because what we're going to do now is we're going to take these shapes and I'm going to start placing some of my uh, watercolor textures into this file and we'll use these shapes to mask them to give that illusion of watercolor. So let's go ahead and jump to this layer here. And you can see how I've taken one of the textures right here. And I'm got my color palette, I should say, for this design is going to be monochromatic. The whole theme is kind of a Western theme. So I have kind of that, that leathery, dark brown hue in mind. So I'm just going to uh, place my textures. And when I use textures like this in Illustrator, I use Illustrator as a staging ground, meaning um, I compile and arrange and just to see what I can come up with. So on this texture here, I placed it. And I'm just going to color it this darker brown uh, hue right here. So we'll just fill it with that. And since these are TIFF images in the set, you can place them in Illustrator and you can adjust the hue like this. Now, right now we have a white background. So if we go to transparency and we go to blend mode and we go to multiply, it'll take anything white, make it transparent. Now, I don't want it to look like this. I want it to be masked within the shape of... Uh, this text actually. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this to the clipboard, select my text and paste behind Command B, and then I'll select the text again here 
and with the text on top, now I can mask it. And to mask something, you just go to object, down to compound path, and make. I have an F key set up, so I can just, uh, I'm sorry, to clipping mask that is, and I have an F key set up for F1. And so we'll click make, and it likes to warn you when you have a shape with a lot of anchor points. This is kind of annoying. I wish you could have an option to always turn it off, but uh, that's what I end up with is this effect. And so you can see already that with watercolor, you kind of have edges of your art that's going to fade out to the paper because that's kind of the essence of watercolor, whether you're painting uh, wet um, on wet or you're painting um, uh, just the pigment on a dry surface, you can get an established edge. And that's kind of the look and feel we're going for. So we're going to keep uh, moving this forward. So I'm going to go over here and select this one, and I'm just going to slide it over. And this is one we're going to utilize uh, for the background of this design. And I'm going to go ahead and color this one brown as well. But I don't want the value on this one to be... Uh, a hundred percent value. I want it to be just a tint of this brown color. So we'll go to color. Right now it's a hundred. So I'm going to go ahead and punch in 15 here. And you can see how faded that is. And it definitely pushes it to the background. Now we're going to be layering some more textures in here. And this is why it's nice to have a set with a lot of different textures because you can start arranging things and compiling things in order to kind of uh, get that authentic look and feel. And in this case, obviously I don't want it black, so we'll go here and once again, we'll color it brown. And I'm gonna adjust the transparency to multiply. And the value on this is 100. I want this down so it's about 40% opacity. And that way it interacts with the texture underneath it. And you start to get that, that nice kind of illusion and you can move these around until you get it right where you want. I think that looks good. And I even think on the background, I think this could go over a little bit. So we'll do that. I think that looks better. And so that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to start placing these textures in. Now, when I place my textures in, we're going to place one more. So I'm going to turn this layer on. And right now, you can see how it's smaller than this skull size of the bowl. Well, the nice thing about these textures is they were created at 1200 uh, DPI. So they're very high resolution. And because they're a texture, they're very forgiving in terms of sizing. Now, if you want to go lower, you're always going to be safe doing that. Usually when you increase the size of a place bitmap uh, image like this, you tend to lose that that clarity of the image because you lose information when you size up a pixel-based image. But because it's a texture, it's very, very forgiving. So we're going to take this one and we're just going to increase the size on this. Once again, I'm going to go to brown and I'll go ahead and color it brown. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy it to the pasteboard, paste it behind the skull shape because we're going to select the skull. And now with the skull selected, with the texture underneath it, we're going to go ahead and mask this. And we'll go to the same command, clipping mask, make. And that looks really nice. But once again, we're going to do a few more things here. We're going to go over to multiply so it multiplies or kind of interacts with the textures underneath it and that's where you get this nice interaction let's zoom in on this uh, where you get these textures starting to overlap and it makes it look more authentic uh, like it's watercolor that's that's the beauty of kind of working in this style so this is the same approach i'll take with all the elements in this design what you end up with is a very authentic looking um, watercolor uh, motif here that has a distinct Western theme. Now, one thing about watercolor that's nice is when you paint in watercolor, when it pools up on the edge of an image, and I'll zoom in on one of these textures like this one right here, you can see how it gets darker on this edge of this watercolor. That's because it's where the pigment gets right up to the edge between the wetness of what you've painted 
and the stock underneath, which is dry, and it starts to create this almost like inner glow effect. And we can do that inside Illustrator to really uh, bring this style to life as well. So we're going to click on this layer and turn it on. And all I've done is I've made a copy of the content uh, that is the mask we're using to mask the textures, and I have it on top here, and it's white. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select this shape, and we're going to go down to, let's see, we're going to go up to Effect, Stylize, and we're going to go to Inner Glow, and we'll click on that. It'll bring up this screen, and this is where we'll want to select Multiply. The color value we want to do will be this dark brown once again. We'll do that, and then we're going to set a couple of these options. For the opacity on this, I want to keep it at 100% value because I want to control the opacity outside of these controls. Um, that means it's easier uh, to adjust the flexibility, and we'll try 7, see what that looks like. We'll preview it, and that's a little too big, so I think it's eating too much into the image, so we'll go 5, and you want to make sure you have edge on. And I think five is going to look, that looks good. And we'll go, okay. So we're going to commit to it like this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to transparency to multiply. That way, everything white turns to transparent. And right now, it's still at 100% value. I want this to be fainter. So I'm going to go to 40%. And we'll do that. And you can see how, especially on the letter L, how the edge has that nice kind of glow effect. If I turn this off, what it was, this didn't look bad. It's just when you add that inner glow, this looks a lot better. Now, some of these elements, like the star, I wanted it on here, but I didn't want the glow to be as big as it is on the type. So I just created a smaller version of the glow, and we also did it down below on the ornament in this design as well. And now a couple more things we're going to do to really kind of push this motif um, uh, over the edge and make it look even better is we're going to add some more texturing. And so now I'm going to take a surface texture I created. And I actually created this from a friend who gave me these images of old film emulsion uh, sheets that he had found in an old photography studio and he took photographs of them and sent me the photographs. That's what I made this kind of surface texture from. And once again, I'm going to colorize this uh, a brown color. I'm going to go to uh, the blend mode and we'll go to multiply and then I'm going to simply s uh, make this very faint at only 20 percent and that's just to add a nice artifacting that runs through everything. So you can see these little flecks kind of running through everything. It just gives it a nice kind of authentic dirty surface and the last thing I'm going to add is one that I'm adding because when you watercolor, if you kind of fleck water on top of some pigment that's already painted, it tends to kind of eat through the pigment. And then you see whiteness of the stock underneath or the paper color underneath show, showing through. And we want to capture some of that authenticity. So this is another texture that I just created with an old toothbrush and some... Uh, watercolor paint and flecked it on the on the paper to get these specks and now I'm just going to colorize these white but I don't want it solid white with no opacity because this looks like snow and I don't want that or dandruff depending on, <laughs> on what you're reading into it but for this we want it to be really kind of faint once again so I'm going to go down to the opacity and go 45 and I think that looks really good. And if we zoom in on this, you can see kind of the effect you get with this nice little flecking. You have the dark flecks. Now you have the white little uh, flecks. And so it's an imperfect surface. And it kind of ages the whole uh, motif. But that's how I'll go about using uh, these watercolor textures like this. And this is just one example. This is just a, a simplistic, almost a sepia tone kind of theme. You could do any colors you want and use blend modes to mix those colors like you would in traditional watercolor uh, to create any kind of design motif. And I'm going to show you um, how to do that in another movie.